This is a basic guide for operating off of the USS Tarawa. The first thing to note, although not presently enabled, is the INS. When you align it, you will want to make sure you align via C rather than align. You then switch to nav when it is ready, but like I said, it's not currently enabled in the early access. Next up, you need to make considerations for the fact you're on a very small deck. You're all probably familiar with the nose wheel steering by this point. Press nose, nose wheel steering down, you enable the steering, release it, and you have caster mode enabled. If This is with the anti-skid set to on. If you set the anti-skid to nose wheel steering, however, we have nose wheel steering enabled by default, and we have nose wheel steering high. Nose wheel steering high will allow you to turn around in very, very tight spaces, such as on the cramped deck of a carrier. This can be very, very useful if the, if the carrier is busy. So to prepare for, to prepare for takeoff, I'm going to set myself into VSTOR mode. I'm going to set my flaps down to short takeoff landing mode. Make sure my flaps are on. I will then go down to the nozzle stopper here, and I'm going to raise this to 65. So now I'm 60 here. So when I bring back my nozzle angle, it will stop at 60. As you can see here. In addition, the flaps will drop down from 25 to 61 because they're in short takeoff landing mode. Next, I'm going to check my weight. I'm currently 30,000 pounds. This is, in my opinion, too heavy. I'd recommend taking off probably something like 2,700. Sorry, 27. Thousand pounds. It is possible at 30,000 pounds if the aircraft carrier is moving. However, you will need for certain to use the H2O for takeoff. So switch H2O setting to takeoff mode. In this mode, the engine profile is increased and will put out more power than usual. It'll also be very aggressive with the water usage and it'll wear out your engine quickly, so be very conservative with using this mode. When water is being consumed, the green flow light will be on. And we are now more or less ready to take off. So I'll taxi out to the start point, bring my nozzles forward, increase the throttle gently. Now usually we start the aircraft at the spawn point forwardmost, which is just before the 450 marker. Bear in mind that this is the furthest forward spawn point you'll ever, ever have. Subsequent aircraft in the same group will spawn behind it. So we'll start about here. You see the 450. So we'll go over our checklist once more. So we make sure we've got the stow stop set up. We've got flaps down to stall. Water is on. We are in V stall mode. We are ready to take off. So nozzles full forward. Throttle goes to full. We hold the brakes. We head toward the end of the deck, and then importantly, before we go off the edge, we pull back the nozzle angle to 60 degrees to give us a good jump as we come off the end. Don't do it afterwards, because you will sink. If you do it too late, you may even end up in the drink. So, brakes on, full throttle, wait for the RPMs to catch up. As soon as we start moving, release the brake, keep it on the centre line. Nozzle's back now, gentle on the controls gear goes up, take it easy with the control, ease off the throttle a little bit, get the RPM beneath 100%, slowly edge the nozzles forward, see our airspeed increase, the nose will drop during this period, if it drops too much simply bring the nozzle back, make sure you maintain a positive climb rate, ensure you have raised your landing gear if you haven't not already. Gently increase the nozzle as airspeed increases. As I said, if you do it too fast, you will start to drop. Now you are ready to switch your flaps over to auto and commence with your mission. Do not forget to switch off your water to ensure you can serve it. So you've made it back to the boat, you're ready to perform your landing having completed your mission. You need to make sure that your gross weight is beneath 20,755 pounds, otherwise you'll not be able to perform a vertical landing. The best way to do that is to add up your stores and your aircraft weight and fuel, 
and find out how heavy you are. In the future, on the multi-purpose car display, the V-Rest or the VTOL Range Endurance Speed and Time page will be available. This will show you these stats automatically and calculate them on the fly for you. In the meantime, however, we'll have to do it by hand. So I've created a bunch of kneeboards, which have weapon information and weights. I'm currently carrying two Mark 82s, two Sidewinders, the Gun Pod and the ECM Pod. So we know the airframe is 14,000 roughly, plus 500 pounds of water. The gun is 1313. We have two Sidewinders, which is 236 pounds. Two Mark 82s, which is 1,000 pounds. The ECM is 317 pounds. And we're carrying, let's call it 4,500 pounds of fuel. This adds up to about 21,800 pounds, which is above our limit of 20,755 pounds. So what can we do? We can jettison the, the weapons to make ourselves lighter, or alternatively we can jettison fuel. You can see down here we have 4,600 pounds of fuel, this is from loads. We can set a bingo here, but we can go to our fuel panel here, enable the dump switches for the left and right tanks. This will begin dumping fuel and it will automatically stop when it reaches the bingo state or 2,800 pounds, whichever happens first. If I jettison my fuel down to 2,800 pounds, my total weight will come down to about 20,000 pounds, which is beneath the tolerance for vertical landings, and so I can attempt a landing. So, in the meantime, I will sit out and wait for my fuel to jettison, and then I'll come in for my landing. I shall enable the display on the control so you can see what I'm doing. This is by done by pressing right control enter. So while we're waiting for the fuel to drain, I will quickly go over the kneeboard. You can set custom images to your kneeboard and put them into your save game folder and then access them from within the game. I've included a link in the description with instructions on how to install the kneeboards you've seen in this video. If you press right shift K, you will toggle your kneeboard on and off. If you press K, you will temporarily show your kneeboard and when released it will disappear. So right shift K to show. You can then use square brackets to change the page. And then any custom kneeboards you've put in will be displayed. As subsequent pages they are organized alphabetically. So I've got here various instructions, for example the startup checklist. I also have the weapon references. These tell me the weights of the aircraft weapons and systems so I can add them up and figure out if I'm too heavy to land. I've also included things like the takeoff weight limitations and the RWR legend and frets. So once again these can all be found in the description beneath the video. It will include a download link and instructions on how to install them. So we are now beneath 2,800 pounds. Our dump switches have automatically disengaged for us. If we have a look down here. They will no longer engage. So we are now light enough at about 20,100 pounds, suitable for landing. So I'm simply going to line up to approach, slow down and prepare to drop my landing gear. During this time I'm also going to trim out my aircraft and try and get it level flying. Prior to landing we need to check off a few things. First and most important is to ensure that your stow stopper has not been left in. This could result in tragedy if you do not realise it when you attempt to hover. So, stow stopper all the way back. This gives us the full range of movement if we need it. I will enable the water. It's the landing mode. This will use the water as and when it's required. And beneath 250 knots, I shall lock, landing drop gear. my landing, landing gear. gear. And prepare my approach. I'll increase my throttle as the drag from the landing gear has slowed me down. Now, the key to performing a vertical landing is to take things slowly and very carefully. Wait for the aircraft to react and see what happens. I need to enable V stall and make my last check. So I've got flaps at auto. I will not use stall because I require less drag to maintain speed with the carrier. Personal preference, you can use stall if you wish. Landing gear is down. Stall stop is down. Water is on. And I'm in V stall mode. So I've approached the carrier. I'm going to reduce my nozzle angle down to about 40, 50 degrees. Reduce my power, try and maintain level flight as shown on the HUD here. You can see I'm doing 0 feet per minute and this chevron indicates my descent rate and climb rate. 
The circle in the centre here indicates my drift left and right. As you can see I'm now falling, so I will increase the throttle. I'm going to pull my nozzles back to 82 degrees. 82 degrees is level with the landing gear when you are landed. This is the ideal position for landing and takeoff, as it ensures your aircraft will be level with its wheels upon touchdown. So now that I'm slowing down, I'm simply making small movements. I'm allowing my altitude to drop slowly. I am heavy, so I need to keep an eye on that. Otherwise, I will not be able to recover. I'm just making very small maneuvers to keep my velocity vector on the back of the carrier itself. I'm going a little bit faster than I'd like to, so I'm going to pull my nose up gently. Keep myself flying roughly level, so I stop descending now. This will allow me to slow down. Take your time with every, every maneuver you make. Do a small maneuver, and I do mean small. See how the aircraft reacts, and then make another adjustment. Once you get more proficient, you'll be able to predict what happens, rather than having to wait to see what happens itself. If you're struggling, I highly recommend you increase the curvature of your joystick for the pitch and roll axes. This will give you more precise control. So I'm now getting very close to the carrier. I'm doing 40 knots relatively. So I'm going to level my nose off. And spring myself down to a slow. I'm going to aim for the yellow line to land on. Keep your descent rate under control. Forty knots, twenty knots relative to the deck. I came in a little bit faster than I'd like to, but it's not a worry. So down to about twenty knots, which is what the speed of the carrier is. And I'm just going to let myself fall down gently onto the deck. Hold down the brakes to prevent the nose from drifting off, and you're done. You just put your nozzles forward and taxi out to parking. Remember, if you wish to turn in a tight circle, turn your anti-skid to nose wheel steering, hold down the nose wheel steering button. You can now taxi in a very tight circle. An alternative method to landing is to land sideways. This is typically what you'd see in uh, various videos of Harry's landing. You approach the carrier from the left, you neutralise your speed so you're matching with them, essentially flying in formation, and then you shimmy over to the right and land on the centre line. If you wish to try this out, I highly recommend you get some practice first at flying at a set speed in a hover. So practice flying in formation with the USS Tara itself for a good while before you attempt to do a landing. The big advantage of this is it allows you to land anywhere on the deck, regardless of the occupants. And as long as you're precise enough, you can also land in front or behind or even between other aircraft. But the key, the key is just to keep yourself controlled, balanced, make small precise maneuvers and most importantly, practice. So with that, I wish you the best of luck operating off the USS Tarawa.